Welcome everyone to another deep dive. Get ready, because today we're stepping into the world of Ian M. Banks and his culture novels. Ah, Banks. Yeah. A true master of science fiction. Absolutely. And we're going to be diving deep into his essay, A Few Notes on the Culture, to really unpack what makes this fictional society tick. It's a fascinating exploration of well, what humanity could be. Right. It's not just spaceships and lasers, although there are plenty of those too. It's about grappling with those big existential questions. Exactly. Like, what happens when humanity evolves beyond scarcity? When conflict over basic resources is a distant memory? What does freedom even look like in a society where almost anything is possible? Those are the kinds of questions Banks tackles head on. So to set the stage, can you give us a quick rundown of what the culture actually looks like for someone who might be new to Banks' work? How would you describe it? Okay, so picture this. A civilization, thousands of years old, spread across the galaxy. And it's not just humans, it's comprised of multiple humanoid species, all coexisting. And where are they living? Is this like a Star Wars situation with a bunch of different planets? Not quite. They've largely moved beyond planets, and instead they primarily reside in these incredible megastructures called orbitals. Orbitals. Okay, for those of us who might not be sci-fi experts, break that down for us. What does that even mean? Imagine a lush green Earth, right? But instead of a planet, it's curved into a ring around a sun. You've got mountains, oceans, forests, all contained within this massive rotating habitat in space. That's wild. So they've basically engineered these self-contained worlds. What's it like living in a place like that? Well, no money, no hunger. Advanced technology basically takes care of their every need. Okay, I have to admit, it's tempting to stop right there and say, sign me up. But I have a feeling it can't be that simple, can it? You're right. Banks was way too smart to just create a perfect utopian society and call it a day. So where's the catch? What did he do to shake things up a bit? Well, he understood that a society's environment shapes its values. So he created this fascinating concept, socialism on the inside, anarchy on the outside. Okay, now you're really going to have to explain that one. What does that even mean in practice? So within the culture itself, they're incredibly cooperative egalitarian. Everyone has equal access to resources, education, opportunities. But when it comes to interacting with other civilizations, they're fiercely independent. Almost like the ultimate live and let live neighbors. Exactly. They value autonomy and self-determination above all else. They're not out there forcing their way of life on anyone. That makes sense. But mm -hmm. there's still this question of, I don't know, motivation. Like, if no one has to work to survive and everyone's needs are met, what's stopping their entire civilization from becoming one giant galaxy-sized relaxation station? Right. That's where Banks' true genius comes in. He introduces the minds. The minds. Highly advanced AIs. Think of them like incredibly sophisticated, benevolent overseers that handle most of the day-to-day -day operations of the culture. Resource allocation, infrastructure, all of that. So the AIs essentially handle the to-do list, which frees up humans to do what? whatever they want. And that leads us to another fascinating aspect of the culture, their emphasis on lifelong learning. Education isn't something you just endure in your younger years. It's a constant. Instead of dreading Monday mornings, they're off composing interstellar symphonies or something. Exactly. They're encouraged to explore, to push the boundaries of what's possible, all within this incredibly supportive and technologically advanced society. Okay, I gotta say, it's pretty mind-blowing to imagine a society where AI takes care of all the, like, the daily grind yeah. and frees up humans to pursue their passions. Yeah. But I'm also curious about what everyday life actually looks like for, you know, for the average person in the culture. Did Banks ever, like, get into those specifics in his writing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He was really interested in exploring the nitty-gritty details of daily life and the culture. And trust me, it's not what you'd expect. Okay, so like designer babies with perfect teeth and, you know, a predisposition for winning Olympic gold. Not quite. It's a lot more... I don't know about this fundamental. They've practically perfected bioengineering, but it's more about enhancing the human experience on a deeper level. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, imagine being born immune to most diseases. Yeah. Having enhanced senses. Or even the ability to, like, regulate your own pain levels. Wait, hold on. Regulate your own pain? That's yeah. a thing in the culture. Yeah. It's about maximizing their biological potential, not conforming to some, you know, superficial ideal. Okay, I will say, being able to dial down the pain after a particularly brutal workout does sound kind of tempting. Right. But I'm guessing that's just scratching the surface when it comes to the culture and their, like, relationship with their own biology. Oh, for sure. One thing that always blows people's minds is the whole 
drug gland thing. Drug glands. Okay, you're going to have to explain this one. So basically, individuals in the culture can alter their mood or even like experience a kind of high just by thinking about it. Hold on. They've essentially hacked their own brain chemistry. Pretty much. No pills, no substances, just pure thought-induced mood alteration. Exactly. And according to Banks, it comes with zero harmful side effects, no risk of addiction. Wow. Because it's all, you know, perfectly integrated with their physiology. It really makes you question everything we think we know about, like the nature of pleasure and consciousness, you know. It does. But I have to imagine that kind of ability could... I don't know, could be open to misuse even in a seemingly utopian society. Did Banks ever address that? Oh, definitely. And it goes back to that idea that, you know, the culture has had millennia to adapt and evolve. They've moved past the kinds of problems and conflicts that we face. They've addressed them through technology, through their societal structure. So while we're still worried about, like, political debates and economic downturns, right. the culture is grappling with existential dilemmas on a like cosmic scale you could say that yeah and a lot of those dilemmas stem from their interactions with other less advanced civilizations remember that whole mm -hmm. anarchy on the outside philosophy yeah well it turns out not everyone is thrilled about encountering a society as technologically and philosophically advanced as the culture so even with the best of intentions their mere existence kind of throws a wrench in the whole galactic status quo it definitely creates some let's say interesting challenges and that leads us to another really fascinating aspect of the culture, their whole approach to gender and relationships. OK, tell me more. So they've basically transcended traditional gender roles entirely. In what way? Individuals can change their sex at will. Yeah. Which has some really, really interesting implications for their social dynamics. Wow. OK, yeah, that throws a wrench into any preconceived notions about gender roles and expectations. What does that kind of like fluidity actually look like in their everyday lives? Think about it this way. If one gender consistently experienced, let's say, more advantages or disadvantages, wouldn't people naturally gravitate towards the other until things balanced out? That's an interesting way to look at it. It becomes a self-regulating system, constantly striving for equilibrium. It's like their biology has become an extension of their commitment to equality. Exactly. Which, I mean, it's a pretty radical concept, but I imagine it also leads to a level of freedom and self-expression that's hard for us to even wrap our heads around. Absolutely. And this whole theme of challenging our assumptions extends to their view on death as well. Yeah. In the culture, it's not this, you know, feared or mourned event like it is in so many cultures here on Earth. Really? How do they view it? They see it as a natural transition, a part of the cycle of life, something to be celebrated even. Celebrated? Okay, I'm having a hard time picturing a celebratory funeral. What does that even look like in the culture? Well, one of their most common rituals involves launching the deceased into a sun. Like a funeral pyre, but on a... Uh... Like a slightly larger scale. Yeah, just a tad. Symbolically, it's seen as a return to the cosmic cycle. Yeah. You know, rejoining the universe in this blaze of energy and light. It's definitely a unique way of looking at things, though I can't say I'm quite ready to swap out a traditional funeral for a... Uh for a solar send-off just yet. I mean, it's easy to get caught up in all the, like, the futuristic tech and the utopian ideals and everything. Right. But it's important to remember there might be something, I don't know, relevant to our lives here and now, you know? With all these advancements and unique social structures, what does the culture ultimately have to teach us, the people living today? Well, I think that's the real beauty of diving into a world like Enum Bank's culture. It's not just escapism. It's about holding up this mirror to our own society, mm -hmm. you know, making us question our assumptions. So what exactly is the culture reflecting back at us? What are some of those key takeaways we can, like, glean from exploring this civilization? For me, it's the idea that true freedom, like real freedom, might mean redefining what we value most as a society. Mm -hmm. The culture challenges us to imagine a world where our self-worth isn't tied to our productivity where, you know, material possessions aren't the ultimate goal. It's a pretty radical departure from how we're often conditioned to think about, like, success, right? Like, we're constantly yeah. striving, accumulating, proving ourselves. Exactly. Banks is suggesting that true fulfillment comes from self-discovery, mm -hmm. from, you know, pursuing knowledge and experiences just for the pure joy of it. Recognizing that leisure and creativity are not, like, rewards for hard work. Right. They're actually essential parts of 
a fulfilling life. Absolutely. That's something I think we could all like benefit from embracing a bit more, even without, you know, the advanced AI and bioengineering. But it's also important to acknowledge that even a society as seemingly idyllic as the culture, it's got its own, you know, complexities, even flaws. Oh, absolutely. One of the most interesting things banks explores is that tension between their non-interference policy right. and the undeniable impact their mere existence has on other civilizations. That whole anarchy on the outside principle kind of bumping up against the reality that just like them being out there is changing things. Exactly. It raises these questions about cultural relativism, the limits of intervention, the responsibility that comes with advanced technology and social progress. It's a good reminder that even with the best intentions, dealing with different cultures, different belief systems, it's messy. It is. There are always going to be those unintended consequences, those difficult choices. And those are the kinds of questions that I think, you know, they stick with you long after you put down Banks' work. He's not offering any easy answers, is he? No. He's inviting us to, you know, grapple with the complexities of this future that just challenges everything we think we know. Which leads us to our final provocative thought for all of you. Banks describes this universe, right, that is teeming with civilizations, some of them far older and stranger than even the culture itself. Which begs the question, what would it really be like to encounter a society, a civilization that is just fundamentally different from our own? And what would that encounter tell us, not about them, but about ourselves? It's something to chew on. If you're ready to, you know, really dive into this thought-provoking world, I highly, highly recommend checking out INM Banks' culture novels. Couldn't agree more. And for those of you who are already familiar with this work, we want to hear from you. What resonates most with you about the culture? What lessons do you think we can take away from this, uh, from this extraordinary fictional society? Head over to where to find you online and share your insights. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.